Quadri has moved second reading on Bill 36, an act to proclaim the month of November as Albion Heritage Month. Pursuant to Standing Order 98, the member has 12 minutes for his presentation. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's, of course, always a privilege to rise and address the Ontario Legislative Assembly and to lead the second reading debate, as you've just mentioned, on an act to proclaim the month of November as Albanian Heritage Month. You may recall, Speaker, that we had a similar debate just a few months ago when my esteemed colleague, the Minister of Citizenship and Immigration, MPP for York Southwestern, the Honorable Laura Albanese, brought, brought forward exactly this same bill for the House's consideration. I am honored now to continue that particular legacy on behalf of the Minister and the Liberal Caucus and the entire Albanian Canadian community that is in, gathered in force here. I would like as well to take this opportunity, Speaker, with your permission to welcome a number of our distinguished colleagues from the community. Uh, good afternoon or meridita. Among our guests today, we have His Excellency Mr. Ermal Mucha, the Ambassador of the Republic of Albania to Canada. Welcome, sir. We also have representatives here from the embassy. We also have representatives here from the embassy of the Republic of Kosovo to Canada. We are joined, for example, by Mr. Uh, Ramzan Keleje, president of the Albanian Canadian Community Association of Toronto, and many other leaders of the Albanian Canadian community, including the lovely youngish members of the Little Leagues Ensemble. Uh, Madam Speaker, I would also recognize the presence of uh, Mr. Speaker Ruki Kondai. Honorary President of the Albanian Canadian Community Association of Toronto and current Chair of the Heritage Committee of the Association. Dr. Kondai has been instrumental, forceful, a force of nature unto herself in advocating for this bill on behalf of the Albanian community. She is dedicated, passionate, and a valuable member of the Ontario Canadian community. Welcome all of you to the Legislature of Ontario. Merci Vina in Parlementin e Ontarios. Madam Speaker, if passed, this bill would recognize and celebrate the accomplishments and the contributions of the community to Ontario. November is a particularly significant month for the Albanian community, Mr. Speaker. On November 28, 1912, Albania declared its independence, and on this day, the Albanian community also celebrates the Albanian, Albanian Flag Day, of course, a unifying symbol of the Albanian nation. On November 29, 1944, Albania was liberated from Nazi Germany. The day is known as the Albanian Liberation Day. The Albanian-Canadian community celebrates these dates in Ontario by raising the flag here at Queen's Park, as well as, of course, organizing cultural events, banquet dinners, and many, many different forms of celebrations throughout the country. Mr. Speaker, we ask ourselves, who are some of the most prominent Albanians that we know? The list is long, and I'll detail a few. But I would like to just also mention that we are fully cognizant and we are also exploiting to the fullest the fact that the Minister of Citizenship and Immigration, the Honorable Laura Albanese, you may be interested to know, Speaker, that the word Albanese in Italiano or in Italian actually means Albanian. So she's officially Laura the Albanian. Mother Teresa, Speaker, uh, uh, proclaimed, as you know, a Roman Catholic saint uh, some months ago. Our family is originally from Kosovo, born in Macedonia, but of course with the objective of becoming a missionary, migrated uh, at the age of 18 uh, to learn English to, uh, to Loreto, and she made the eventual journey to India, where we are all, of course, very familiar with her lifelong dedication to the, the poor and the sick and the infirm, I believe in the city of Calcutta, and she won the Nobel Prize in 1979. Uh, so she's an extraordinary symbol of Albanian heroism and uh, multi-faith identity. Uh, members of this house, those that are historically inclined, uh, may be interested to know about uh, Gergi Castriotti Skanderbeg, a 15th century national hero who unified the Albanian nation in its resistance against uh, the imperial rule. Of course, a famous writer who I think shares a namesake with me, uh, Ismail Kadri, or Kadri as I prefer to say, uh, a world-renowned writer, who, by the way, won the Man Booker Prize uh, in 2005 for a long uh, contribution of uh, historical novels, political satire, and so on. Uh, we know, for example, Jim and John Belushi, the American Albanian actors and comedians, Rita Ora and Dua Lipa, internationally known singers, and last but not least, uh, or a couple of people, Tai Domi of the NHL and Inva Mula, internationally recognized soprano. 
Uh, speaker, if you allow me, I'd also like to take a few moments to share with this legislature a short historical background of the Albanian nation and the resilient Albanian Canadian community right here in Ontario. As many of you know, Albania is a country in southeast Europe, bordered by Montenegro, Kosovo, Macedonia, and Greece. It is a coast on the Adriatic Sea, located east of Italy, and the Ionian Sea to the southwest, just above Greece. With abundance of natural beauty, nearly 500 kilometers of coastline and budding expanses of rugged mountains, Albania, which has endured centuries of foreign rule and a brief but impactful Italian rule, is a melange of old and new world influences. Today, Albania is a member of NATO, has received the status of the official candidate for accession to the European Union. However, the country and its people have had a long history far exceeding that. The Albanian community, Canadian community and, of course, our esteemed guests here that have joined us here uh, represent the different parts of Southeast Europe where Albanians inhabit, uh, have uh, inhabited countries for centuries, including Albania, Kosovo, Macedonia, uh, Montenegro, Serbia, and Greece. As the Minister of Citizenship and Immigration has shared previously, uh, Italy has a historic Albanian minority of approximately, uh, to this date, of about a quarter of a million, scattered mostly across southern Italy. And the historical Albanian community in Italy are known as the Arbaresh. They settled in Italy in the 15th and 16th century, displaced by changes of imperial boundaries uh, in southeast uh, Europe. And the Arbaresh are known to have preserved their authentic language, religion, traditions, customs, and art. And I know that the Albanian community here will be welcoming a number of Arbaresh community members during next month's November 3rd, by the way, Speaker, Albanian Heritage Festivities here, uh, hosted by the Liberal Caucus and my colleagues. The Albanian diaspora, of course, exists globally, but in particular countries such as Canada, Turkey, the United States, and Western Europe. Speaker, I would also like to note and share with this House some of the background on the character and national identity of our esteemed uh, community members from Albania. Uh, studies in anthropology show Albanians share the same ancestry as most other European peoples. In fact, Albanians are very ancient people, descendants of the ancient Illyrians. Uh, and you can catch some Shakespeare references in there too, Speaker. Dear most, during most of their troubled history, the Albanians have been conquered and ruled by three major empires, Roman, Byzantine, and Ottoman. These long occupations brought significant anthropological and social changes, most importantly, of course, with the introduction of three major religions, Catholicism, uh, Orthodoxy, as well as Islam. So the Albanian nation is comprised of mainly Islamic, Catholic, and Orthodox Christian faiths, with small pockets of evangelical and Jewish faiths. However, the Albanian national identity, which transcends all of these, has remained resilient throughout the centuries. And Speaker, all you have to do is meet a few of the Albanian Canadian community members, whether it's from the ambassador to Dr. Kondai to young kids, just to see how proud they are, as we are of you, of maintaining your national heritage, culture, and, uh, and identity. The community, of course, for example, here in Ontario, has held on to its traditional customs, songs, dances, instruments, stories, legends, oral histories and literature, all so dear to you and to us together. They have held on to what's known as the Code of Besa, a collection of principles which regulated Albanian social, economic, and religious order together with traditional customs and cultural practices of Albanian society, not for 10 years, not even for a century, Speaker, but for centuries. Besa suggests being faithful, keeping the promise, and giving the word of keeping your word of honor. Besa is also the meaning of being hospitable, taking care of guests, travelers, and those, of course, in need. As an example, during World War II, Albanian, Albanians in Europe sheltered more than several thousand uh, Jewish people from Nazi persecution and, uh, of course, sacrificed locally uh, for that very uh, extraordinary effort. I now speaker, uh, speak about our Canadian Albanians. Uh, according to our latest statistics, uh, Albanian Canadians make up on the order of about 30,000 people and counting here in Canada, uh, mostly here around the GTA in Ontario. And of course, the first wave of Albanian immigration occurred in the earliest, early 20th century, mainly as a result of the uprisings and uh, dislocations in Southeast Europe uh, post-World War I. The second wave of Albanians arrived following World War II, escaping communist rule in Albania and the former Yugoslavia. However, the third and biggest wave of immigration speaker occurred as the collapse of the communist dictatorship in Albania in 1991 and the 1990s ethnic conflict that led to the breakup of the former Yugoslavia. So a troubled, challenged, but deeply proud 
and uh, deeply esteemed community. So we salute you for maintaining your heritage and culture after all the changes of governments and dictatorships and, and rulers and empire uh, to this very day. The Government of Canada, Speaker, as you may be knowing, established, established a residency program to accept 7,000 Kosovo Albanian refugees fleeing the Kosovo conflict in 1998 and 1999. Today, the majority of Albanian Canadians, of course, reside here in our great centres, the GTA, Hamilton, Kitchener, London, Ottawa, Peterborough, and Wen in Windsor. And nowadays, members of the community can count on several community associations for support and networking opportunities within our, publicly, uh, within our uh, system here. Within our publicly funded school system, there are a number of different elementary schools. Speaker, that, uh, as, as you know, Premier Wynne and our entire caucus and the Minister of Citizenship and Immigration deeply respect and support uh, multicultural Canadians. As an example of that, we actually offer the teaching of the Albanian language in elementary schools here in the province of Ontario. So one unifying organization within the community, and I salute its director and president and executive lead of the Albanian community, Canadian Community Association of Toronto, led, as I said quite earlier, uh, by Dr. Ruki Kondai. It's been active since establishment in 1989, and the association is developing a greater awareness of pride amongst its members within the entire Canadian community. Albanian Canadian speaker, as we are, should also be proud of their centuries-old contribution, not only to the world, but particularly now here in the province of Ontario. And I would, with uh, respect to Hansard, like to say now, uh, we thank you for being, uh, for maintaining all this heritage and culture, and in Albanian, Yuduhina Teyini Krenar Cheyini Shpta. Thank you, Speaker.